This month, we have exciting news to share about the Pine Phone, Pine Note, and Pine Time, including what you probably clicked on this video for. This is the video version of the community update, so it won't be as detailed as the blog post, but it will give you the synopsis of the news. For more videos about open source, including Linux smartphones, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. Also, thanks to JF, Clover, Brian, and Lucas for making this video possible. Before we get into the big news, we would like to first give a shout out to KDE on their 25th birthday. KDE is a big contributor to the Pine64 project, and most of our devices, including the Pinebook Pro, the Pine Phone, and now also the Pine Phone Pro, all ship with Plasma pre-installed. Happy birthday to the KDE team, and make sure to let Plasma developers know how appreciated their work is to us. Now on to what you probably clicked this video for. PinePhone Pro. You heard me right. We got a newcomer to the PinePhone line of smartphones. The PinePhone Pro is a fast smartphone with premium features built from the ground up to run mainline Linux. It features a 6-core SoC, 4 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of eMMC flash storage, as well as a 13 megapixel main camera. It also features an in-cell IPS display with great brightness and viewing angles that is covered by Gorilla Glass 4. This device has been given a sleek matte finish, which is also more resistant to fingerprint marks, and the camera is now protected by the same glass as the phone's panel. Needless to say, we kept all the features you know from the original Pine phone, such as pogo pins, privacy switches, USB-C video output, and a removable battery. It is also a much more powerful device than the original Pine phone. This is because its core purpose is different. When we shipped the original Pine phone in late 2019, only a few mobile Linux OS options were available. Back then, the goal was to provide developers with an open, readily available device and inexpensive platform to drive mobile Linux forward. Fast forward today, and many of the 20 plus operating systems have reached a mature beta status, and many of those systems were born on the Pine phone. Mobile Linux cannot replace Android or iOS for most mainstream consumers, but we are at a point where many open source enthusiasts are going to give mobile Linux a go. MMS, Android app support with Waydroid, long battery life, and camera support are some of the features that are leading people to start daily driving their Pine phones. And now software has reached a maturity where a more premium smartphone makes sense. So with the Pine Phone Pro, we are now entering the next stage of mobile Linux from being primarily development focused to being usable for technically inclined end users. With the speed boost the Pine Phone Pro offers, current operating systems will be able to fly on it but keep in mind that this is not a second gen Pine phone, but rather a more high end Pine phone. In a sense, an evolution of the original idea behind the Pine phone. This means that the original Pine phone is not going away anytime soon, and the Pine phone Pro is compatible with all of the Pogo pin accessories, which means that if you're getting a keyboard or back case add on, they will work on the Pine phone Pro too. In terms of the phone's specs, we are using a modified version of the RK3399 called the RK3399S made for the PinePhone Pro, and it's fully software compatible with software written for the RK3399. We chose this as the basis of the PinePhone Pro for two reasons. We are already used to working with the RK3399 due to it being the base of the Rock Pro 64 SBC and the PineBook Pro. And because of this, it has nearly full mainline Linux support, which will make porting OSs to the PinePhone Pro an easier process. We worked closely with Rockchip on the PinePhone Pro, making sure that the SoC could operate well within the confines of the PinePhone Pro's chassis. The SoCs we are using are binned, pre-selected, and voltage-locked, which means they can operate at 1.5 GHz while consuming much less power and inputting less heat than regular RK3399 SoCs, such as the PineBook Pro. If you're an early adopter, the PinePhone Pro Explorer Edition will be available later this year for $399, we intend to start shipping the Explorer Edition late this year or early next year, depending on how the FCC certification process goes. And we currently have a small production run of the PinePhone Pro reserved specifically for developers. This will give developers time to get used to the hardware and begin work on porting over their operating systems to the platform. If you're a developer and would like to start working on the PinePhone Pro as soon as possible, make sure to visit preorder.pine64.org to receive a purchase coupon. More PinePhone news will be arriving later this month, including an update on the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro keyboards, which have just entered production, so stay tuned. In Pine Note news, we are happy to let you know that the production has not only rolled off the factory floor, but has also received its FCC certification earlier this month. This means that we are ready to start taking pre-orders from developers and contributors who would like to contribute to the development of the device. 
These units will ship without an operating system with the device in a flashable mode by default. These units will also ship with an EMR pen, a device cover, and a USB-C breakout board in order to make debugging a little bit easier. If you are a developer interested in doing work on the Pine Note, then please go to preorder.pine64.org and file a request for the purchase coupon. In terms of software development, the biggest hurdle so far is getting the e-ink display initialized under Linux for image output. There are a couple ideas on how this can be achieved, but neither of them have been tested. Aside from this, RK3566 development has been going extremely fast and it appears we will have a very well supported SoC in a matter of months. This process will speed up even more once developers get their hands on the hardware. As for early adopter Pine Notes, their availability will depend on the development progress in the next few weeks or months. Ultimately, the schedule will be dictated by support for the e-ink panel, so it could just be a matter of weeks, but there is a chance that this process will be more difficult than we think, and it will take a bit longer than we expected. In the last month, AffiniTime has had two brand new releases. AffiniTime 1.5 shipping with a new alarm app, which is a highly requested feature. This took a while because of the fact that it needed to be implemented on the technical side and the UI side, but now AffiniTime has implemented a basic alarm with support for only one alarm and a few options, which does get a functional alarm app, but it does also leave room for improvement. Some other features with AffiniTime 1.5 include the fact that time now saves with a reboot instead of time resetting when you shut down the watch, so this will save you the pain of reconnecting the watch to your phone every time the battery dies. Speaking of the battery, the battery reading is now done more regularly, which should provide a better experience for users. On top of that, there were some reworks to the Bluetooth advertising messages to improve connections to Bluetooth-capable devices. And to put a cherry on top of the Bluetooth improvements, AffiniTime 1.6 came out recently with a one-line fix that increases the reliability of the Bluetooth connections significantly. If your PineTime was having connection issues before, this update should fix that. In other PineTime news, AffiniTime now has its own organization on GitHub. JF no longer wants to be the only person in charge of the project and has moved it to its own GitHub organization as well as invited two others to help manage the project. But these won't be the only two helpers as JF plans to add more in the future. So that's the end of the community update and have a good rest of the month.